Hey, you just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, we got a great giveaway for you today and a great show. Great podcast today. Here's how you win the following prize. The prize that we're giving away today is free access to our MAPS Split Workout Program. MAPS Split is an advanced body part split bodybuilding workout routine. We normally charge a lot of money for that, but if you leave a comment underneath this video in the first 24 hours and Doug picks your comment, if he thinks it's the best one, you'll get free access to MAPS Split. That's how awesome. Uh, the giveaway is. You're going to love today's episode. By the way, before we get to the episode, turn on notifications and subscribe to this channel. One more thing, we are running a sale on two of our workout programs and one of our workout program bundles. The first program that's 50% off is MAPS HIT. The second program that's on sale is MAPS SPLIT. And then the bundle that's on sale at 50% off is the bikini bundle. All of them half off. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code SPRINGBREAK for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. Yeah, Justin, that story is uh, a great um, great way to, to, to see the difference between boys and girls. Yeah. You know, you know one thing that it I, uh, one thing that my friend used to do, mm. here's something that girls just don't do. Mm. Um, he used to, he'd have a towel <laughs> and yeah. he'd fold it up mm -hmm. and then he'd fart on it and throw it on what? your face. Yeah, so he'd have a towel. Wow. That works? In. Apparently, so we would be chilling. It's an advanced or whatever. form of cupping. Yeah, so it's yeah. like cup. You know, you know, you guys know what cupping is, right? Yeah, my my now my, obviously my best friend's older brother used to do that to us when we were little. He catch to, it. Yeah, you know, fart in a cup, then he'd catch it, and then he throw it in your face. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That no, works. He I did the towel. Yeah, and then he'd whoosh, and then it just land on you. Wow. Yeah, that works. It, yeah. I mean, enough for you to be. I mean, maybe it doesn't, but it was just on his ass when he farted. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but these are these are yeah. things that bring you know guys together and yeah. girls. It would bring them apart. Well, what I was talking about, <laughs> yeah, we, there's just so many things. Like when you get bored, especially, and, and you know, we were we were sitting there because at college we had to like go to all these chapel events, and so we're sitting in there, like you know, sort of putting in time, and, and I'm like hanging out with my buddies in the back in these pews, and like we're just trying to figure out like what we can do, and so he just <laughs> he has this like superhuman ability to just summon like from the from the depths of his bowels, like just just like just just gassy stuff and in, in his Gross. throat and then and then so he just <laughs> and, and he gets it up to about here and then he just leans over and just like oozes it that's so <laughs> gross dude <laughs> over this poor victim's shoulder and then that's and then the they're worst. just they're just sitting there you know mind their own business all of a sudden they catch wind just <laughs> <laughs> then they start gagging you know it's funny oh, it's I messed bet, up i bet that move that he did yeah Improved his ranking among the friends. Of course, yeah. So, he got a nickname so, after that too. You was know? It? Like, well, like we called him Cyber Steve because he was like he always like spoke kind of like a robot. So <laughs> we so, called him Cyber Steve. I love this guy. Yeah, yeah, he was great. <laughs> this is great. He was a funny guy. You guys ever play? Uh, I think we talked about this on the pod. I told my son about this. He thought it was the most brilliant when game. He used to ever. fart and lock the windows. No, that's great. Oh, uh, when you hit the boxing? button. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I still do that. I do that yeah. to my kids all the time. <laughs> Totally. Um, you, get, you guys remember, uh, we talked about this once. Uh, was it, what's it called? Baby Bridges? You guys ever play Baby Bridges? Remind me of that one. So yeah. I told my son about this, and he's like, that is the best game ever. So you're with your friends, and, and if, if you start this game, it doesn't end. In other words, once you start it, it lasts for years. It just never ends. So if you say a word that starts with the letter B, mm -hmm. if, if you don't say Baby Bridges real quick afterwards, then I can punch you as hard as I want. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah. So you'd say you'd say something like, "Hey, you guys want to play basketball?" And you didn't realize that you said something with a B, and then your friend would come from behind and just blast you <laughs> until you say it. Yeah. Or everybody would pummel you. Oh, baby bridges! And then you'd laugh, and that was it. Yeah. That's another one of those games that uh, <laughs> that brings guys closer together. Right. So you guys never did anything like that. I mean, you do the thing with the circle, and then you. Yeah, that's I did that uh, with Justin. We played shoulders when yeah. you were a kid. You remember what, that? That was what's just, that? Or you just back and forth? yeah, shoulders is just back and forth. That was like six. Greatish, where you just <laughs> lay into each other. Yeah, you, every guy get you just you get a shot. Next other. guy gets a shot until someone oh, says yeah. submits yeah. and says no yeah. more. Yeah. My arm fell. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't I can't do this anymore. No. Oh man, you that know, or the atomic sit up. You remember the atomic oh, sit up, course, right? Dude. That was everybody's. That was, that everybody's was classic, done an atomic yeah. sit up. That's uh, we don't even yeah, have to say. Um, my kids now you can't one. do any of this stuff anymore, right? This is uh, okay. So you can. So well, hold on a second. Let's just let's just let's picture this for a second. Here's an atomic sit up for the the viewers who don't know. You're, you you have a new friend in the group. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's a new friend. 
and you bring him in, and then you say something like, "Man, you're pretty strong." Like, uh, you know, how many sit-ups can you do? Oh, you do probably fifty. Yeah. I bet you can't even do one atomic sit-up. Right. And he'd be like, "No, I think I can," or whatever. So you say, "All right, let's give it a shot." So what you do is you spin him around, then you have him sit on the floor, and then someone goes behind him and puts a shirt or a towel over his forehead and eyes, and holds it while he tries to sit up as hard as he can yeah. with much strength. But what he doesn't know is that one of your friends is standing over him. Yeah, pulls his pants naked. down with his butt in front of the guy's face, yeah. and then the guy lets go of the towel yeah. and Dude. smack yeah. right into his butt crack. Yeah. Straight <laughs> ass. So you, yeah. you can't tell yeah. me that you could do that nowadays, Justin. I yeah. mean, you go to jail, bro. Yeah, yeah. You guys are probably right. Yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I haven't imagine, personally. Imagine if a kid told his parents uh, he made me I slam know. my face into his butt crack. Yeah, you'd be on Megan's <clears throat> law. Hey, well, speaking of of disrupting schools, do you guys see what's going on with Google? No. Google has announced what they're doing with uh, uh, education. Uh, they, didn't they talk about this already? What do you mean? Is, are these the? Uh, am I tripping? Are these the sort of like six month certifications Not that are six equivalent? Months. Well, it's supposed to be equivalent to a four year. I don't know if it's only six months long, but it's supposed to be equivalent to a four year degree. And now okay. it's and right now it's a high school. Is that the plan? Mm -hmm. And yeah. now it's accepted by because I talked about this before, so maybe it's something different. It's accepted by Google as a four year degree, and by like three or four other tech companies as yeah. of right now. Is that in my in my own? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. As of right now, that's what it. I mean, I imagine it's going to. Yeah. I mean, it's going to until Apple has one and, and Facebook and, and, and Apple's. Yeah. I know they've already put their 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 name in the hat also, so I know they're going to be moving that direction too. I mean, this we said this. We called this four thing. or five years on the. It's pod. inevitable. Yeah, that, absolutely. This is going to sense. disrupt education more than anything well, else. Well, tech, the old model for tech almost doesn't make sense because the old model is you go to, uh, you know, you go to your university for four years for a bachelor's, mm -hmm. uh, master's might take, you know six or longer, but tech moves so quickly that in four years, you know how fast things uh, change in yeah. four years? Yeah. So it makes sense that these tech companies, especially because it's so competitive, like one of the reasons why they pay so much in tech is that they're competing for talent because it's so fast moving. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that they would come out with a way to say, look, forget the four years, come take our certification course and then you can work for us and we'll pay you, yeah. you know, to in order to speed things up, right? If that's your industry of choice, yeah, the, the sooner you get into it, the better. Yeah, it moves so fast. Like everything has changed. Like what, what's that? Is it, Moore's law, not Moore's law. The yeah. One, yeah, Moore's yes, law. Yeah. yeah, so it's just like it, it, you're always behind. Like right when you start to learn something, it's already advanced, you know, before you've even Not to mention that. Yeah. Most of the stuff you got to take in college, they, they don't need The first two years is all general ed stuff anyway. Well, so, waste. Yeah, it's a waste for uh, especially a tech Especially job. a specialty. Yeah, we, you know? We've been spending so much money just on like trying to, to, to be well-rounded, and we found that that's not very effective in the workplace. No, yeah. the, the current market is, and it's always moving in this direction more and more, is more and more and more specialized. So uh, here's why, right? Let's say you have um, one person that can build a whole car. So we go back to Ford, right? This is how Ford, uh, this is how he created the, the assembly line. You have one guy that could build a whole car versus uh, a guy who's really fast at doing the brakes, really good at doing just the dashboard, really good at doing the steering wheel. You create an assembly line and it produces much faster and better product because everybody specialized on one thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, times a uh, hundred now, right? So in tech especially, you're very specialized. So it doesn't make any sense to learn all this other stuff. It's actually quite inefficient. Now, do you think we're going to see universities start to change like how expensive they are and what they do? Like, mm. or, or do you think that they will start offering similar type certifications that will compete with it? Like, If they start to lose students, absolutely. I mean, that's inevitable, yeah. right? There's mm -hmm. got to be, uh, if, if Apple and Google, which I don't know what the, the number, maybe Doug can check this for me, how many people they employ. I mean, just those two companies alone employ so many people. Not only that, but think about it this way. In tech, it, let's say you're competing. Let's say you're a, a kid at a college and you have, a, a, I don't know, a bachelor's in some tech-related field, right? Mm -hmm. and now, you haven't had a job yet. So four years later, you're going to look for a job in tech. Now you're competing against a kid who had the certificate but also has now two years of experience working at Google. Yeah. You both go get a job at Apple. He's got no degree, but two years of experience at Google. You have a degree, no experience at all. Who's going to get the job? Yeah, yeah. Do Google employs 135,000 people. How many of these people? That's yeah. a lot. How insane is that? Have you seen Apple 147,000? Wow. wow. Now, that's, have you seen insane. you could try and meet every employee and you never would. How no. weird would that be to to run a company like that and know that you'll never meet 
everybody who works for you. That's yeah, wild that's to wild. me. Well, so have that's you seen, crazy. Doug, maybe you can look up the median or, yeah, the median uh, salary at Google and Apple. It's insane. It's like 200 something. It's ridiculous. So yeah. you had like Stanford was one of their main feeders for like Apple. I'm just wondering like what that looks like. You wonder how many of these kids are going to end up like doubling up with mm -hmm. like also going to like somewhere like Stanford and like trying to get their certification course through Apple or, you know, like a Google situation as well. I don't know because experience is weighed more than education in, in most places, including tech. By the way, here's the median salary at Google. Median is not average, by the way. Average would be adding them all up and dividing them, which wouldn't be fair because I'm sure the CEO makes whatever. So this is the median, literally the middle, $258,000 a year mm -hmm. yeah. at, at Google. That's insane. I was actually having this conversation with Jessica because was it you, Adam, that sent uh, – Adam likes to do this to, to, to annoy the – or make me feel terrible. He'll send a house in, like, Idaho. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll be like, hey, Sal, look what you could buy for $1.5 yeah. in Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. And it's literally – in a state. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's like a, a Hollywood mansion estate, right? Yeah. Now, in San Jose, 1.5 million will get you a- Track home. Yeah, a 20, a, a, <laughs> no, it will. 2,200 yeah, square yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low 2,000 square foot, older track home. Yeah. Track home. Yeah. So we were driving through different neighborhoods because uh, we're putting my son to sleep because he's just, you know, this is one way we get him to take a nap. We put him in the car and go for a drive. Mm -hmm. So we're driving around and then I take her to, have you guys ever been to Monte Sereno mm -hmm. next to Los Gatos? Oh, Adams? Monte Sereno, yeah. So one of the most expensive oh, places crazy in there. California, right? Yeah. Now sure. we're, we're looking at the houses and they look like estates. And she's like, how much yeah. do these cost? I'm like, I don't know, 8 million? No, yeah. try 15 to 20. Really? Million. Yeah. Okay, so 15 to 20 million. Yeah, the, the, so the I looked Saratoga, the like Saratoga area, which, and you're talking about an even higher end area in Saratoga, that the like an old 50 year old house that is less than 2,000 square feet, you're talking about 2 million. Like oh, the wow. starting point is 2 million. Wow. So if you have an estate, you're talking about like the like, you know, 4,000 square feet. Yeah. Plus, oh, yeah, you're talking. 15, 20 Really? Yeah, so we're driving crazy. through and I'm telling her that and then I show her the one for you showed me from Idaho and she's like, what the? And I'm like, here's the deal. In in the Bay Area, you have a little bit of houses and then you have a bunch of people that work for these tech companies that just become millionaires. Yeah. And so they just have so much money that it, it does, inflates everything. It yeah. inflates the hell out of everything. Yeah. They're, well, what's crazy ruined it for us. Well, what's crazy is when you, okay, so use that example, right? 15, 20 million dollars at a place like that. It, and where I showed you, which is in Eagle, which is right outside of Boise, Idaho, gorgeous. You could get a, you could fly a private jet every week to work, and, and <laughs> yeah. still, I'm serious. Yeah, that makes sense. See, this is oh, how he tries to close. Yeah, that's really, that's what, I, I'm serious though, right? You get a, you if you own a 15 to 20 million dollar mansion in California, do the math on what the property tax is. Right, so imagine right. you even pay it off. The property taxes alone are ridiculous. It, it, plus, if you have a mortgage on it, which is even crazier, so the amount of money you're spending, you could buy the house over there outright. The property taxes just fly are, to lunch yeah. every day. With you the, could, with you could, yes, and it's you only just an have hour to flight. Not care about money to stay here? You know what I mean? It's just at in, that point. It just, it's just crazy to me. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So I was explaining this to her, and she's like, "What the? I mean, I have a you know a family member who got a job at Zoom. I think I don't know a couple of years ago." Um, and she, because Zoom has now taken off and she has stock options, so it's like she's only been working there for a couple of years. Yeah. She's on pay, now a millionaire yeah. on paper yeah. because of the stock and stuff. Well, it's there's crazy. been some pretty cool, th and, and here's the thing there's good and bad with technology. Like, uh, there's, I was watching this show that was like talking about finding a lot of these missing children and like how technology has advanced to, uh, basically, like, they, they found like hundreds of thousands of more cases of missing children because of this technology where they're able to render like uh, as they, they age, you know, they, they take the, the mom or, or the dad or whoever, you know, if it's a boy or a girl, and then they kind of like match them to their, um, you know, their age, like from their photos. And then they start to kind of like, you know, build what they would look like today. And so it's like a lot more cases have been found because they've, they've been pretty accurate with is, these. Now, is that common? Is it common that a kid that goes missing is then they find found later? four, five, six years oh, later? Even, even like 20 years later. They, what? Oh. Yeah. It's like crazy stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't even imagine what the parent would go through. Right. You think your kid's gone forever. And they still have hope. And it's just, it's, it, these crazy stories it's totally a heart heartwarming kind of a, a show i forget the name of it which is unfortunate what's it on netflix or what's it on it is on netflix so speaking of uh of cgi rendering or whatever did you guys i sent it to the group did you guys see the some, parent one no no someone went through um sculptures and paintings of ancient roman leaders 
and then made oh. a, a CGI image of him so you could kind of see what they really would look like. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> well, Justin looks just like Emperor Nero. Damn it. Bro, exactly. <laughs> the, the tyrant that just like <laughs> murdered all of like, uh, the, all Christians the Christians. All the Christians. Yeah. Sure related. Oh, I'm going to make sure Andrew puts it in the, in the video. <laughs> it looks just like Justin. It's hilarious. Oh, it, wow. You know what? Like, I look like a lot of people. You know, like everybody <laughs> always sends me like all these actors. Like, I can't even tell you guys how many DMs I get from like all these like, you know, knockoff me's. You know, <laughs> like, whatever. They're not me. That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, I watched it. I watched a show this week. Uh, weekend. It, it, any of you guys seen I Care a Lot on Netflix yet? No. It's trending in the top ten. I think it's like number one or number two right now. Really good. So, uh, anytime there's like a plot that like I haven't seen and and it was well done, actors good, great storyline. So and it made me go afterwards like, oh shit, I wonder how often this actually happens. So it's like this. Uh, the the main character, she is a uh, I don't know what you call her her title, care specialist with like a law degree. And basically when some people get really old, like, and they can't take care of themselves, they have dementia and they don't have family members, the court will appoint them like a, a care specialist to now take care of their estate and then make those decisions because they, 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 they've been deemed medically they can't on wow. their own. Mm -hmm. So this happens and this happens when people don't. And so there's in these companies that, that help these people, quote unquote, right. That, and are supposed to you know, to handle their estate and whatever insurance stuff and put them in a home if they need to and potentially sell off. So their take care of them, essentially. Yes. And the whole thing is about this girl that's just a, she's a con artist. Oh, I mean, that's what man. she, I, I feel mean, like that would be prime for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, so that it's a, I don't want to ruin the show. It's a really good show on what, uh, what, what could potentially happen. But my, I'd never even thought about that, that was a thing. But think about how how much there is uh, room for somebody to take advantage of that that demographic of people, right? Somebody who's eighty years old, they don't have any kids that, that are uh, that's going to take their inheritance. They've had insurance forever. They made decent money. They have a house or two. And who's going to take care of all that stuff after they pass on? And this girl goes in and she finds it, and she has a deal with the uh, you know the uh, whatever you call the um, aftercare homes. What are they called? I can't think of the name of them right now. Th that retirement that, homes. Yeah, like a retirement home. The doctor. So she cuts them all up. Uh, yeah, and then, then the doctor who would say that she has dementia and whatever. Oh, it's just a racket. Wow. Yeah, so oh, man. yeah, so she's back to warn everybody. So they're they're getting like a premium rate. She's charging a premium rate for her service, and then the and then the doctor's getting a kickback for saying that she needs assistance and help. And so, without ruining the whole show, the, the it's about her doing oh. this to a lady, and she fuck with the this wrong is lady. That's evil, dude. Yeah, 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 it's evil. You know, they're the number one target for con artists. Yes. is the elderly. Yeah, uh, there, there's so many of those like phone scams and everything like actually work uh, because of like elderly homes that they get a hold of, mm -hmm. and you know, especially the political stuff. Like they get them all charged up about like whatever the hell you know. Like we'll get them fired up, and then have them send money to their governor or, or politician, and it just goes right. To I, the I had a client who was in his 70s, and he uh, he got a call from Microsoft. That's what he thought, right? Oh, we need to update your computer. We need to fix this and that. Are you noticing any problems? And of course, he's like, oh, yeah, I noticed it's a little slower. You know, everybody's going to notice that. So he gave the guy control of his computer wirelessly. You know, they can get your desktop or whatever, and just, just emptied everything. Took mm -hmm. money, charged his credit cards, took all of his passwords, was buying things on Amazon. He was like, what do I, I can't, what do I do? And it, so it, was, it was crazy. Yeah. But all because he believed the guy was from Microsoft and helped him out. They target older people all the time. I told him like, anybody call you over the phone mm. for anything like that? There's it's a bullshit. special place in hell for those f motherfuckers. I yeah, feel, I I, I, that's all I could think about when I was watching this. I was like, oh, what a fucking yeah. evil person to yeah, do that. You, you know what I just started watching that I think you guys were, were talking about a while ago was uh, Queen's Gambit. Oh, you just now seen I that? I just now started watching it. Yeah. Oh, really good. Really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, brilliantly made the girl that plays the the main part. She does such a good job playing that character and making yeah. it believable yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. Really, really good. But I guess that world of chess is pretty insane. Yeah. I had no idea. Oh, yeah? I had no idea that it was that. Wasn't your son hardcore into it or no? He was, but not like that level. Oh. Yeah. Right. I did know that the Soviets, that there was a big deal between the Soviets and the U.S. in competition, but the Soviets were dominant because... Obviously, they were paid by the state since they were kids to become, you know, the best in the world or whatever. Yeah, 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 crazy. I mean, it's like it, the 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 levels, right? That are in it. It's crazy. Like I played chess as a kid, but I'm not like that. Like the the ability to see so many moves ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think that translates into, uh, translates into other parts of intelligence and in life. Yeah. That I think that's why it's so you know. Popular. I think it was in the I don't know if it was in the 80s or 90s when uh, tech, uh, you know, people, computer engineers 
were finally able to create a program that was able to beat the best chess masters in the world. Yeah, it was so Watson, right? Uh, I don't know if it, I think Watson for sure, but before that, it was actually in the I want to say in the eighties or nineties. Before that, they would try to make programs that would win, and the masters would keep winning. Mm -hmm. And then they got to the point where no master could beat uh, a computer at all. Uh, and I remember, I don't remember when it happened. It was, it was it was not that it was a while ago. Well, isn't there? I forget what the didn't it go in Queen's Gambit? They talk about how many total moves there potentially are. It's like an infinite uh, number. Of yeah, them. yeah, it's, I remember that that uh, statistic I brought. It was like there's more chess moves than there are molecules in the universe. Or yeah, something, something like crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, speaking of crazy numbers, so scientists, I'm going to pull it up because this number it was just made no sense to me. Scientists have just estimated the speed at which the universe is expanding. Okay? What? Yeah. So you ready for this? 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Okay. <laughs> megaparsec. Do you know what a megaparsec is? 3.2 million light years. Wow. So 73 That's kilometers. That's a real metric? Yes. How do we? Because so they're saying that it's, so it's, it's yeah. growing at that rate. Yes, yeah, 73 kilometers How? per second per 3.26 million light years. I feel like this is like we're a bunch of scientists that get really high and yeah. they just throw some random shit <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. fuck with everybody. Like, come on. How do you prove that? Just what what How did, do you prove that? I did the Kessel run and how many parsecs? I forget. That was like a, a Han Solo quote. It was. I didn't know that was a real metric. A, one parsec Hilarious. is a parsec is three million light years. So a mega is million. Okay. Or whatever. So, I mean, how do they even measure that? <laughs> they do. They have ways of doing it. Oh my god. With math. <laughs> hey, every time I say yeah, some shit like this, Adam's math. always like, "How do they know that?" Yeah, <laughs> that's impossible. It is impossible. It's you know, it's impossible to to fact check. Yeah. You can't fact check it. That's we just gotta. So like, they could just tell yeah. us. Yes, yeah, that's well, what they I'm just saying. tell us. There's dark matter. I mean, they've never seen it. Yeah, dude. They've never seen a black hole either. They just like uh, you know, we just, bl we just blindly believe. It's okay, a conspiracy. <laughs> fuck, fuck, I don't know if it's a conspiracy as much as it is like, okay, how do you know that? Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. Because you 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 just we we mathematically just keep compounding and go like oh it's probably no, this big. No, I actually don't know. I have no idea how they would know, but I do know that they're pretty good at, at estimating speeds and stuff like that. Oh no, yeah. dude. Uh, Adam, I, Adam, I, I ain't <laughs> buying that bullshit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's like it's not expanding that fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's expanding faster and faster, and this is what blow this is what uh, blows them away. This is why they think there's things well, like, like dark matter, I mean, okay, particle wait, accelerators. Wait, now, here's the thing, though. In right. order to prove that it, it's expanding, wouldn't we have to be able to measure to the end of it? I think that they the way that they measure it is the distance between stars, and they can the brightness measure of the stars, something like that, and they can measure the, that and show that the star, the yeah. stars are separating at a particular speed. I think, and again, I a, a theory, know. right? A theory that because the stars are separating, that must mean the universe is expanding. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I bet you if we looked it up, we still wouldn't know. Yeah, like if Doug looked it up, how do they measure the speed of the universe? Be like yeah. some crazy. That's what I say. I don't, I'm not buying it. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I didn't even yeah. go past the it gets algebra. Out there I went. Just... I went to algebra one. <laughs> I know. And, and Matt, were you the one of you guys good at math? And high, at, at no, I was. I was. I was actually, geometry is where I like totally peaked. Really, yeah, I was done. I was that. good, but I, you know, unfortunately, I didn't keep. You know, really? Here, yeah. Here's an example of when you when you have. So you could have been an Olympic swimmer and a math genius. I don't know about that. Just, just decided. Yeah, I probably would have been pretty decided to do bodybuilding. Yeah, <laughs> smarter. Michael I'm pretty Phelps. average at everything. I'd probably been pretty average at that too. Okay. That's why. Yeah. But I, you know, it's funny, right? When you meet it, when you have a a teacher that really pushes you in a direction to you know get better. I just didn't have that in math. And is effective. Yeah. Yeah. Makes like so I think it's really funny. So you guys know like my grammar's terrible, my spelling's terrible, mm -hmm. but yet I was in advanced English in high school. Mm. But the reason why that was was I had a, a teacher who believed in me and kept pushing me in that direction. Yeah, said, but your communication skills are very high. Well that, so she saw that, right? Okay. She saw that my ability to put like my thoughts on paper, although it was scrambled and grammatically all messed up, mm -hmm. was good, right? Mm -hmm. And I also had a good d discussion in class. So she mm -hmm. loved that. So so she pushed me in that direction, even though I would consider that an area where I'm weak at math. I had strengths in it. I finished it early. I didn't have to do any more of it in school. And so I didn't. And yeah. I didn't have a math teacher that connected with me. In fact, I always got in trouble in math because I was goofing off because it was easy for me. Mm. So I didn't continue to push or go beyond mm. that. So I'm good or a decent yeah. I was at. In, I just didn't like it. So. Same here. Yeah, I love science. I was good at science. But See, yeah. I'm, I hated math. I'm drawn I hated to math. math. I'm drawn to math because it's it's absolute. There's a, so That's you, what my son says. Yeah. Yeah. The, everything else is like uh, are debatable. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's like, what my son yeah, says. He's a, he's a, he's a math wizard and he 
coasts in math. He just kind of does what you know what he needs to you know get a B if he wants or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know this because he'll he little shit he'll like not turn something in. His grade will go down, and then I'll get on him, and he'll be like, "All right, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll ace next the next test." test. Yeah. yeah, and then he does it. That's so how like, I was goofing off in class all the time. Like the teacher, I was always getting in trouble because I was distracting other kids because it came easy to me. Mm -hmm. And again, instead of having a teacher that saw that and then pushed that in me, I was constantly getting in trouble. And then when I was done, I'm like, I'm out. This teachers is have a huge impact, yeah. on a huge potential impact. Teachers can make a student think that they don't like a subject or they suck at it, or they'll make the student think that it's a subject that they enjoy. I had a history teacher. Mm -hmm. I love history. It's one of my favorite things. I had a history teacher in uh, eighth grade that just made me despise it because all he would do is he'd go up to the front of the class. He was the laziest fucking teacher of all time. He'd go up to the front of the class, he'd open the book, and he'd read the book. Yeah. That's all he would do. He'd sit that there and read the book. That was my English teacher. That was the one where I got in trouble because we'd, we'd just have to read uh, you know, Romeo and Juliet, and we'd have to read these Shakespearean uh, plays, and I would just get so bored that, like, finally, I, I convinced her to let us all read it, and so then I would add accent to it, you know, and I would like, of course you did, you know, and I would <laughs> be like the super effeminate, flaming guy, right, yeah, yeah. and then kick me out, and I got to go to the principal's office, and I'm just like, dude, I'm trying to spice it up here, yeah, you know, this is boring, yeah, yeah, you got to have fun, dude. Yeah, if you don't have fun, you know, when, when this is why when kids are like into something. Like you ever ask a kid about like Pokemon or whatever, something they're into, they know everything about it. Mm -hmm. It's because they're interested. This is why those there's that movement, yeah. um, like the homeschool movement. There's a there's a movement within the homeschool movement. I think they call it unschooling, mm -hmm. where it's like child led. And the, what they say is is exactly that. Watch the kid, see what they're fascinated with. They find their passion, and then you and then you use that uh, in a way. So for example, because I had a client who did this, and actually turned out their kid turned out quite well. And I said, well, what do you do if they don't like like math? And he go, and they said, well, let's say your kid loves cooking a lot. Well, then you have math in cooking. Yeah. Well, what if they love or cars? building something? Yeah, what if they love exactly building or cars? There's math in that kind of stuff. Yeah, right, right. So it's in there, but you use what the kid is really interested in. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. Well, that's what Ben Greenfield is doing with his kids, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think he's had a lot. I mean, they get they're running their own business and podcast already, I so know. I think they're doing just fine. I know yeah. it's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, I, I, uh, did I tell you guys about the study that came out on past uh, steroid users? Did I bring that one up already on a podcast? Um, did about it, about them keeping the gains or what? No, 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 Do you no. Remember, Doug? No. Yeah, you did talk about it about uh, lifelong detriments of using steroids. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So more stuff is coming out. I guess that's a big thing. They're finding more and more studies that your your hormone levels are likely permanently affected. Did we need a study for that? I know. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's another one. We talked before about this. Oh, yeah. you know, like we do, we study some things. Well, like, especially we... if you introduce it early, right? Like in your formative years where like you're at an already high like testosterone, and then you add exogenous testosterone yep. to take over. It's like, you know. I know. Well, I think that's the, that's the challenge that we had with uh, the last, would you, when you interviewed um, John Romano, right? Yep. When he gave that crazy, you know, dosage for somebody who's young. And I think that's, you're at that age, you're just basically, if you're going to do that, you're committing to yep. doing it. But, and I remember as a kid, I did that. I knew that was I that crossed my mind. I was aware that if I moved into this and I tried this, I may be potentially doing this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I accepted that, you know. And I think that's what you just have to do if you're going to go down that road. You better be okay with knowing that you may be having to take testosterone for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here's some something else that's kind of interesting. So scientists want to build a an arc and send it to the moon, essentially. They're calling it the Lunar Arc, and they're going to jam-pack it with 6.7 million genetic samples, mm. including sperm and eggs. Just in case our Earth blows up. Yeah, huh? just in case some yeah. shit happens to us and or, and human you know, species dies off or whatever. Sure. On the moon will be all the genetic stuff that you need yeah. to start the human species again. They won't what? start there. They'll do it in Mars, too. Watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, again, we're starting to think interstellar now, which is interesting. Like we're starting to move out all these like private businesses going into the space race. Like a lot of uh, momentum is is getting into like, you know, even visiting. I guess there's a space hotel now that uh, is going to open up in a few years. Oh, oh is that Elon rad. that's doing that? Who's doing that? 
I thought it was is is Elon doing that? I'm not sure if it's I think Elon it, or it's like Virgin or it's uh, uh, Blue Origin, which is um, Amazon. Uh, you know that mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. guy's so. is that the name of theirs? Blue Origin. Blue Origin. Blue Origin. SpaceX. And then what is um, and then Virgin. And, and, what's Virgin? It's something else though. It's Virgin Galactic. That's Galactic. What it is. Yeah. That's right. Voyager Station. Uh, it's going to be commercial space hotel 2027. Who's doing it? Um, let's see, planned by Orbital, Orbital Assembly Corporation, a construction company run by John Blinkow. Ah, Blinkow. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who that I, is. I yeah. That Click is. on the images. I want to see what the rooms are going to look like and all that stuff. Like, if it sucks. Yeah, you don't even get to really, like, interact with any of the other pods, I don't think. It's like a pod that, you know, is just for that person yeah, like, individually. Let's see. Scroll down. Oh, so it looks like a big Ferris wheel. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of, I mean. Oh, so then maybe you could, Justin. Maybe you'll be able to go like a hotel where you go down to like a lounge area. Oh, look at that basketball there. Look at that. <laughs> well, oh, wow. what are the, the hoops going to be like, you know, 80 feet tall or what? How's <laughs> that going to work? Do some yeah. serious dunks. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. they have a gym. Oh, yeah. Man, I could I could bench press a thousand pounds yeah. for a hundred reps. accidentally pee. So, I mean, I have, this is more your guys' you know, wheelhouse here. So how long would it be to get to that, right? So as a, based off of how fast it is to get a, get out into space, how long would it take? How you long to, is the flight? Yeah, I don't get, think it's that long it's at all. Not that long, I think yeah. it's probably yeah. I don't think it's going to be that long at all. I feel like the flight to get there is going to be rough though. Oh. I'm not a big guy oh, on yeah. planes anyway. I don't like turbulence. Oh. I don't know how it feels to be on a rocket. the G forces to, to get you to move upward like yeah. that. Ooh. It'd be insane. Yeah, yeah. By the time I get there. Ooh. So you guys don't think it would be long to get there at all? Like you mean long as far as hours or as in days? Like is it long? No, no hours. No oh, hours, okay. dude. Max. Yeah. yeah, I think it's not going to be. I think it would probably be faster to get there. Than it would to fly to like Europe. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Oh wow, really? Yeah. yeah, and I could be totally wrong. By the way, how long? No, yeah, because like just getting out of the atmosphere doesn't really take that long. Uh, yeah, let's find that. Let's out. see. Uh, well, the trip is twelve days. Uh, let's see the experience of life. The first four months of travel, eighty thousand dollar deposits. They're already sold out. <laughs> yeah. Eighty thousand yeah. dollar deposits, and then the and then the rest of it is what to say nine million dollars. Holy shit. Okay, so wait, wait, oh, wait. Three, station three hours and 48 minutes after liftoff. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be like a three-hour flight. Wow. And then, and then you're in space. Wow. Yeah. What if you're on What if you're on this thing? Like, let's say you're on there. So, the, okay. Yeah, so you're on the space station. Yeah. You're, like, you're there with your girl. Right, because yeah. you you're looking to bring up, your girl because then now you got to be in the club, right? Oh. Yeah, because the- you got to do it in space. Oh, that's true. <laughs> And that's that's the first thing you think of, what, what, right? What, the Mile High Club. This is this, this what trumps happens, that. What happens when you finish? Oh <laughs> shit! I don't know. You gotta have some. Babe, you gotta go get that. Um, what if you're up there, right? And you're looking out the window. You're like, oh man, look how beautiful Earth is. And and then a nuclear war breaks out, and you see it from oh, from space. Like we're gonna stay up here a bit. Fuck. Yeah. What do we do now? Well, you'd be sure glad you're there and not down there then, right? Yeah, but no, but what are you going to do now? Are you yeah. stuck in space? Food supplies will last another week. Uh, yeah, but no. Well, you think they got to have more than that on there? Come on. I gotta, don't know. Yeah, yeah. They could be backed up with more. And what kind of food are you going to have? What are they shipping up there? It can't be fresh. Just a bunch of tang. Yeah. Well, if it's only, <laughs> it's only, bro, it's only three, Ugh. it's only three and a half hours of, away. You know what I'm saying? You could get, you yeah, could, but it's expensive. You, could, have, you could eat in Las Vegas. You can eat a fresh fish out of the Mediterranean the same day, bro. That's true. So yeah. do, don't give it long. Yeah, before. but I wonder how much that fish would cost in space. Well, you yeah. fly it up on a rocket. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. It's all relative. Yeah. I mean, it's what's, all good. By what's that, your room service bill going to be? It's nah. like plasma TVs were twenty grand a shot just fifteen years yeah. ago. You know what I'm saying? They call them MREs. That's all you're going to yeah, eat. They 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 were talking about doing a space elevator at one point. Have you heard? about this where they yeah. build a structure that literally connects to a space station up in the sky what? Yeah. and how does it prop- is it like some kind of electromagnetism or something that shoots it up and down or like no, how does it I, work? I have no idea Come i mean on. probably yeah right you <laughs> think it's a rope yeah <laughs> <laughs> that pulls people up uh, yeah. the elevator gets stuck. Energy. oh fuck what are we yeah. gonna do we're stuck in the elevator something yeah it's, it's crazy to think that we're heading that direct that in our lifetime we're gonna see this stuff bro dude. that's insane yeah. it's, it's 2027 i wonder that's- if that's what it'll, it'll bring down housing prices in san jose finally <laughs> but you buy a house that's, in that's wishful yeah. thinking dude yeah, yeah, that is wishful like, thinking yeah. <laughs> finally opens up so people want to go there more than california hopefully oh, yeah. so what happens oh, if you, what happens if you throw something outside the window is it to hit earth I get, it probably will. Stupid. No, it doesn't. No, it you doesn't. don't think so? 
Yeah, yeah, these all the space are, elevator. Are these all these potential ideas right here? Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd be cool because did you watch that movie? I think it was Elysium or whatever with uh, Matt Damon and, and. Oh God, a long time ago. Yeah. So like there was the whole like the Earth became sort of more of a wasteland, and then there was this, this utopian. Oh yeah. Kind of space station that was outside the atmosphere up there. Like I wonder if they're gonna eventually try and build something cooler with like golf courses and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Earth sucks now. Yeah, Earth sucks. I'm a little I, up here. I think you know. I think you know. Where are you guys at with this? Like I think it would be cool to go check out and experience, but it's like I would never want to live there. In space? Yeah. Oh, hell no. No way, dude. It's- yeah, you guys say that, but I bet you there's a lot of people that would want to. Well, to dumb. live in space? Yeah. What yeah. the hell are you going to do up there? Yeah. Uh, well, there's, I mean, basketball, obviously. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That. My I mean, bad. Just showed that. I mean, they're, I'm sure they're going to have a lot of stuff still. Dude, it's not good. Like, it's Bro. not conducive for, like, life forms. Well, yeah, I, I, ag- I agree. We're I'm supposed not, to, we yeah. evolved But I Earth. guarantee you, if, if that many people sold out on $80,000. It's just because they, they want to go to space. There. It's like a status thing, you yeah. know, as, is what I thought. How, oh, many ret- just, how many people do you think will be returning? I bet you no one's going to be like, I'm doing that every year. They're like, I did it. I'm done. I'm never going to do that oh, again. Oh, yeah. You think so? Of course. Yeah, I don't know, dude. What kind of- <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of people that hate Earth, dude. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would like to do that. Well, just to say they did. Send them up there. I need to take a break. Get out of here. Earth. Yeah. I'm going to go to space. Yeah, go away. Real quick. Yeah, because now the, the big problem with that is uh, how, do they, how do they solve like you just starting to atrophy? Have they solved that yet? Like where they need it? Where do they like? If well, you I stay up there, machines, if but. you stay up there for a while, yeah, yeah. The, um, it doesn't I, even take that long. I thought no. no in fact, the the guy who stayed the longest at the space station when he came da- back down to Earth, his body wasn't right for I think six months or a year because our bodies evolved with gravity and it yeah. literally it fucks up everything. Your 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 circulation, his eyesight, the way his brain operated, and he was he went through hell for like I think it was like six months. Yeah. To oh. rehab his body and get it back to normal. Oh yeah, it's debilitating. It, it, yeah, it just totally messes you up. Yeah. So that, that's an extreme. So you got to think there's some after effects from just a, just even, like a week. Yeah, I mean it's got to be course. a spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. If that if staying that long fucks you up that bad, even probably a week or two up there is probably you got to right. work out every day or something sure. like that. Otherwise uh-huh. you're fine. I mean my body atrophies when I go to Mexico. That's just well, <laughs> I, lay that's on the, I lay on the floor. And well, think about that. Like in you know in terms of liability, if you're the company like shooting just these average people up there, like. Like astronauts train rigorously, like like I don't know what their protocol is, like how many months or whatever, and like uh, years that they train to, like you know, being in those uh, pools and everything, and like trying to like go through all these obstacles. And you're right. I bet you when you pay your deposit and then you pay the fee, what's included in that is training. You would hope so. It, right? It's not going to be like a plane; like you just get on and, and go. And then if you, you, you'd have to be able to fail people if they can't qualify, yeah. because like you don't want that. You know, sending somebody up and then they have like serious health. Now, here's problems. a question: What are the laws? Because you're not in a country; you're in space. Yeah. Is there a set of law? There probably is. There's an international yeah. set of laws in space. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you if you commit a crime? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what if you commit a crime? Right? You commit a crime in space. Where do you get tried? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna do it, dude. It's gonna get weird. Of course. Yeah, well, I'm sure you. I'm sure automatically you fall under the laws of wherever that business is from, right? So if you're taking SpaceX and it's from the U.S., I'm you- pretty sure they have an international set of laws on yeah. in space. You know what I mean? Where th- these are the laws that you can't. I don't know. Mm, That'd be well, Doug's looking it up right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Space balls. It's, yeah, see what yeah. the, it's a sp- space oh, law. There's space law. Oh, space space laws. Black and white photo. Is it that old? What does it say, Doug? I well, can't. Yeah, read we that. got space force now, so you know it's like the the space police. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're the United Nations set some laws regarding space. So mm. interesting. I wonder what those laws but are. You can't advertise they call it like Coke. Unusa. Yeah. Uh, Anusa. Is that an acronym for <laughs> they, something? They yeah. Suck it, yeah. I'm not sure what it's United for. Nations. I don't know what the rest stands for. Something of space, something rather. Yeah. So, rules and regulations of international organizations. So, I, you probably can't even smoke weed up there, Adam. That's lame. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, going. You yeah. yeah, you're not going to go. You're going to want to get high when you're high. You know what I mean? <laughs> Otherwise, forget about it. Hey, uh, what flavor is that one that you have? That, that, uh, is that, that you have? Uh, vintage Cola. So that's the one you always have. No, right? so I, the root beer is my favorite. Okay. Root, root beer is my favorite, and then when we run out, which I think we're out of that, then vintage cola, and then maybe the the is it strawberry vanilla. Mm-hmm. Those are my my three favorites. So that so th- was it thirty Same. calories? Was it thirty or sixty calories? No, no, no. It's only it's 35. 35. 35, and then only two grams of sugar in it. Carbs are twelve. Um, obviously no fat. So no it's protein. actually high in fiber. Yeah. Yeah. So it's high in fiber. It's, uh, you know, it's funny. I got a DM from someone and they're like, uh, are you sure this is like good for my gut? Cause it's soda. It tastes like soda. Yeah. Like it's actually made as a gut drink first. And then second, it's as a flavorful, 
you know, alternative. To it's soda. been great because it's com- I've complete. I you know they're everywhere now. I see them at Whole Foods. I, see I know. Them all the place I know. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've blown. They've blown up. It's been yeah. Cool. What do they call it? Because uh, they don't call it a soda. They call it something else. Not like an elixir, but they call it something else. Like uh, uh, sparkling tonic. Sparkling tonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, why? So Supp- I don't know. That's just it's so a different it, category because it's not technically soda. Yeah. So I'm sure oh, it tastes like soda, but it's not. It's. I mean, I love these things. Yeah. I like all the the. What are they called? I don't know what you call them. Like the kids kind of flavors, like the cream soda and the. You know, they have the strawberry one. Yeah, they have the strawberry vanilla, which I, I would say is my top three for sure. And, mm-hmm. then, and then the vintage cola and the root beer is the best. I think yeah, root beer tastes. They, they killed it on root beer. When I was a kid, if I got, I never, I rarely ever drank soda, but if I did, I always went for the like the weird color, you know, stuff like the like the yeah. like the red the or purple. purple. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. He was great that guy. Like, purple uh, drank. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was me. Is that the uh, Sunny D commercials? They're always like, "You want Sunny D or the purple stuff?" Purple stuff. Now I know you're not. Sour you, purple stuff. You were never like a big. You're not a big soda drinker. No, I, never, I didn't. I didn't grow up having a lot of it. What I about you, love. Justin? Like I, I know I've admitted on the show that I was a, I was a major soda drinker. Then I was a major Diet Coke drinker. So this has been like life changing for me mm-hmm. to be able to have an alternative that actually tastes like that. Yeah, on and off. I mean, I I get cravings for it every now and then. So it's nice to have that as an alternative. But uh, I. If I was going to drink anything, it would be like Sprite or something with like a, a lunch. But um, my brother and my dad were like, I don't know. I think I got grossed out because they they used to drink the big gulps, super big gulps and everything before we go to church or whatever. And like I was just like, Ugh. and Isn't you know, that like 200 grams of it's sugar? It's so much sugar. And like now they're paying all the prices for, for doing that, you know? And like we didn't know any better back then. It was all just like, oh, it's soda. It's fine. You yeah, know? I, I drank that stuff as a kid for sure. Like, I'm surprised thing? I don't have diabetes. Yeah, as a kid, I was-, I was How long would it last you? Just a day? No, no. Are you kidding me? Like an hour, a couple hours. Oh my most. God. Yeah, yeah. No, we used to suck those things down like water for sure. How many grams of sugar is in there? And that does. Well, I mean, there's so many levels now. Remember, I took that picture when we first started the, mm-hmm. the podcast. We were we were traveling somewhere, remember? And we, we stopped at a gas station and they had the they now have gallon drinks mm. that are that are like big gulps. It's like, like a big handle on Click that. on yes. that in the bottom yes. there, Doug. Right, right? No, no, go down. And it says people also ask because however you asked the question was wrong. Yeah, just click on that one right there and it'll give <laughs> you the answer. Offensively enormous. No, not a large is. Coke. Yeah, these are all small, go. dude. These aren't. Yeah, uh, 108 grams of sugar in a big gulp, yeah. that and that's, and that's is, just a big gulp. They have they have gulp. super like big gulp. They have like extreme super big gulp. They yes. have like there's like ten levels to this oh. shit. Yeah, and they were addicted to cherry coke, so that was their thing. You know, and I like, like cherry coke. Yeah, too. I, I would just you know have a little bit. I can't do that. To. You know, uh, what was that drink back in the day? The creatine one, and it had hella sugar in it. It was it was a muscle Celtec. Te- Celtec. Celtec. Yeah, yeah. Was it seventy five grams of sugar? <laughs> yeah, remember? You know, it's funny. And it would make me nauseous as fuck oh, when yeah. I drank that. I I thought it was like, like we need to spike your insulin to get the creatine <laughs> in your body. Well, yeah, yeah, and then and then they That's tell you they then it. they tell you to load too for like the first week, so you're doing like two or four servings. Yeah, yeah. So. And I was, I thought it was so magical because I put weight on always from them. It's like, yeah. Hella carbs, yeah. hella sugar. Yeah, hella carbs, <laughs> sugar, and then water weight for oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the fruit a, punch one, I yeah. was like down in there. I thought crazy. it was, I mean, think about it from their point. It was very brilliant because you got to think that your, your, your demographic of people that are buying that are a bunch of skinny boys. They just bo- want to see skinny the scale bo- go up. Yeah, skinny boys that are insecure about being skinny and want to get bigger and put size on. And yeah, you just load them up with, you know, 700 calories of sugar plus the creatine in, in addition to this it. Is, what a great example of the supplement industry just being stupid like they're like oh you know if you increase insulin it should shuttle more creatine into your body and so what was their next step let's give you 75 grams of dextrose with a five you know gram serving of creatine yeah. that'll that'll do it yeah, yeah. jeez i mean perfect sense. kind of brilliant actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no that messed me i used to the, the weight gainers i had had a lot of would have a lot of dextrose i remember which one i had it was like 150 grams the weight gainers never worked for me because it went right through me oh you get the, almost every weight gainer get the poops. yeah almost every although i still did it anyways as a kid you know because that didn't register for me i was like mm-hmm. oh, i just that's just part of the process the one that i had in regular rotation was uh weeder and it was mega mass four thousand yeah. so they had mega mass two thousand then they came out with mega mass four thousand yeah. but what they did is they just doubled the servings it was the yeah. same damn formula two thousands better yeah and yeah. it was it was a it was a bucket like this big 
And then the scoop was like that, <laughs> was like that big. And you'd have to put four scoops for a serving. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. It's like you're going to the beach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is good. It's oh, five servings in this whole bucket. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Real quick, before we get to the questions, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have guides that can teach you how to build your arms better, get a better squat, get a flatter midsection, burn more body fat, even become a better personal trainer and more all at mindpumpfree.com. That's it. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Justine Priad. If you eat in a calorie deficit all week and then have a cheat meal, will you gain fat cells and is that considered yo-yo dieting? Okay, so yo-yo dieting is more of a extreme restric restriction and then kind of an extreme bulk. Uh, yo-yo dieting would refer more to, just to kind of dysfunctional eating. Now, cheat meals can fall in that category, and I hate using that term, cheat meal, because it uh, it encourages this kind of on the wagon, off the wagon mentality, which tends to turn into dysfunctional eating. So, what I tend to do is I tell to tell I, I tend to tell people you're going to be on this deficit, and then once a week we're going to have you in a surplus, rather than saying it's a cheat meal. Now, the science on this actually supports the metabolism boosting effects and the muscle preserving effects of doing this. In fact, there was one study where they compared people who were on a continual deficit to people who were on a deficit and with some intermittent periods where they would eat more calories. And they found that jumping the calories up here and there actually resulted in more fat loss and less muscle loss. Bodybuilders have known this for a long time, um, and I have seen this with people that I've worked with. Now, that being said, this is in a controlled environment and a controlled yeah. amount of, of a surplus, which I think more to the point of this question is – what I think how people are using it now where it's like, oh, I'm in this, I follow my diet, you know, six days a week and I'm in this calorie deficit, say it's a few hundred a day. And then Sundays I can eat whatever I want, yeah. you know? And then, and I, and I think it's, it's turned into this thing where, you know, I'm not counting, I'm off. I followed this deficit all week. So I'll, I'll eat like an asshole, I'll eat whatever I want, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and, and to that, yes, you could. Yes. I mean, we talked about this with uh, Lane Norton when Lane came in and we talked about how you could add fat cells. Uh, I don't think a cheat meal would do it. A cheat day uh, definitely could. I mean, uh, I, I know a lot of competitors that post-show would consume 20,000 plus calories in a day. You know, you do that. That's insane. Yeah, you do that. And it's not that, it's actually not that insane when you've been deprived for that that long. And if you just add a bunch of garbage. Yeah, and you eat a bunch of garbage like you are, you just, you just, and so doing that absolutely could do that. So it might that, take longer than a day though, really. Do you think it would happen in just one day? I don't know. I think the studies they did were, were I, like, I, think, I mean, they're in such extremes that like, I, I think, yeah, there's a poss possibility that, that could happen in that situation. Well, it's, a, like, it's average person, not so much. Right. It's got to, it's got to be on a spectrum, right? How, how much much was the deficit going into it so how depleted because yeah. you gotta think your, your body's gonna take a lot of those calories originally and fill up all your glycogen stores first right and then mm -hmm. fill your gas tank up and then whatever over, over spills ends up getting stored off yeah. as body fat so it's really there, there's a big spectrum there and you know i think the the more you get crazy with that cheat day the more you're flirting with that end yeah, uh, end of the agree. spectrum yeah the theory is that the the body tries to figure out ways or adapt to capture all this extra energy because your fat cells they grow right so that's how you get fatter but when you're when you're, you're when the deficit is super low and then the surplus is extreme your body it, it gets the signal that says we need to become yeah. more Preserve efficient. all of this. Yeah, we need to get yeah. more efficient at storing all these extra calories. Not just because we got all these extra calories, but rather because we were in such a deficit for so long. So we don't know if we're going to go back in that extreme deficit. Yeah. And so it actually adds fat cells. Not just makes them larger, but adds fat cells. This is why I think uh, competitors, because you hear competitors talk about this, where they over the years lose their sharpness mm -hmm. or they they oh I can't look as sharp as I used to even though I do the same exact diet or whatever it's pro it might be because they're adding fat cells to their body and I don't think there's a way to take fat cells away once you add them no you can't no. you can shrink them but you can't get rid of them right, so right. that's and I I agree with you so that was what I saw with my peers when we were competing is that you know when you were in the quote unquote bulk season everything goes. I mean, you, if, as long as you're training and you know, your thought was, I'm going to put on as much weight as I can. And with that theory, you're going to add fat cells, which is only going to make it more difficult when you lean out for a show again, uh, the next time. And so you would see these competitors 
where they would, you know, they had this formula down. Oh, I know my body type. I know what I need to be training. Oh, I know what my diet needs to look like. I know what my cardio regimen needs to look like. They would apply that formula to the next show and it would end up getting more difficult, more difficult for them to achieve that same mm -hmm. look that they had before. And they'd have to go to new extremes to get to that place again. So, and I, I absolutely would attribute it to exactly this point is that, that what happens when they over consume like that, even someone like that's a, at the competitive level, they're adding fat cells. Well, even not at the competitive level, just having like that whole cheat meal uh, type of uh, mentality just isn't as, you know, it's not an effective strategy. It's not something like if we're still just uh, really fixated on, you know, cravings and certain things that, um, you know, your entire week is devoted around, like uh, being able to consume and it, it promotes that sort of binge day where like uh, if there's no like, you know, if you're trying to put all these parameters around that, uh, you, you know, that's that's one of those things you're going to be fighting that constantly. It's a terrible idea. Most people have a really bad relationship with food mm -hmm. or they don't or they have no relationship with food. They don't really understand it whatsoever. And it'd be no different than having somebody who is an alcoholic encouraging them. Hey, one day we're going to get yeah. fucked up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But you'll be fine. Don't worry. The next day we'll get right back to things. It's like you're, you're flirting with dangerous places for a lot of people. And I think that, yeah, one cheat day, a cheat meal, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to harm somebody, but it's the behaviors that it promotes and then the likelihood of what happens afterwards. Because if you're going to fall off the wagon or you're going to stop doing your diet, it normally happens after that. It's like, oh, you had yeah. that day where that happens and then another day lines up. The and floodgates day. open up and boom. Right. Next question is from ANP1034. What's the best at-home vastus medialis exercise? Okay, so the vastus medialis is the it's part... the new bicep, I it's, heard. Yeah, it's the part of the quadricep that is on the inside part of the leg. Teardrop. Uh, they call it the teardrop in bodybuilding or physique competitions. And it's a desirable part of the quad to develop because it, it, it causes... It gives you better aesthetics. Just like they'll talk about the outer sweep. Well, they'll also talk about that, that teardrop part of the quad. Now, here's the thing with the quadricep. The attachment of the different heads of the quad are pretty close to each other. So trying to develop one over others, it's kind of difficult. Now, you can do this, but generally speaking, for most people overall, just build your legs. If you just build your legs, you'll get a pretty balanced uh, look to your quads. But if you're somebody who's advanced, you've got great quads already, and you want to activate that part of the quad a little bit more, or let's say you're a bodybuilder, competitor, and you want to try and you know shape up your legs or, or give yourself better aesthetics, there's some ways you can activate that part of the quad a little bit more. One way is to you know do leg extensions with the feet turned out. Believe it or not, that actually does activate that part of the quad a little bit more. You're asking about at home. Um, studies show that single leg exercises are really, really good uh, for, for, for doing this because of the stabilization that's required. So like step ups, single leg squats and split stance exercises like Bulgarian split stance. That squats. developed that from the most for me. Is that where you know? Yeah. That? I noticed that personally the most from that for sure. And are you, are you right? Externally rotating, not internally yes. rotating? Internally, they'll do more of the outer. Okay. Externally, we'll do more. Of the okay. Inner. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that seems backwards to me yeah, right yeah. now, but no, the sing all the single leg exercises, lunges, Bulgarian split squat and step ups are the three that, in fact, I think I did a post like a long time ago. And it's actually a picture of that. I think my buddy Brendan was commenting on that. And it was when I started including step ups, step up to a balance, what mm -hmm. I was doing uh, back then. And those exercises I felt developed the most. I think uh, messing with the foot position, foot position on things like leg extensions, which you see really common. Yeah. I think that's less effective which, with. It is. I mean, if you're like, a, if you got like really big muscular legs and you're a bodybuilder and you're hyper responsive, maybe. Yeah. But the average person, you're better off just focusing on building. Yeah. The whole leg. Not to mention what will also make that look more pronounced is actually leaning out. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of times that we, we we try and develop areas and we're so focused on growing or, or a particular part of a muscle to mm -hmm. look a certain way. And man, if you want you want a muscle to be revealed or look impressive, like one of the best things you can do is actually just lean out. Mm -hmm. There's many times where a body part on me looks way bigger just because I'm super lean. And then there's times when it's mm -hmm. the biggest it's ever been, but because I'm higher body fat percentage, it doesn't look as pronounced. Yeah, one way that I tend to see and feel uh, development there is the sissy squat. Uh, that deep stretch at the bottom, 
And then when I come up, I really squeeze my co- my quads really really hard. Squeeze and I cock. and I do whoa, <laughs> it's, it's, and I do notice I get development in the middle. Of the, I thought he was inter- going there too, Justin. So, yeah, Sorry, my yeah, bad. Yeah, I was <laughs> getting bored with this conversation. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've never life. literally ever heard somebody ask to develop this muscle in my life. That's, because, <laughs> that's because ridiculous. You're all performance. You I can know. Give a I'm shit sorry, about. this is lame. You're yeah. like that. Come on, Doug. You're like that car with 600 horsepower that's like <laughs> got rust on it. It looks. Yeah. Like, Build your legs, you know. Yeah. Be a man. <laughs> Next question is from Captain Mata. Is it better to squat lighter weight ass to grass versus heavier weight at 90 degrees? Oh boy, depends who we're talking to. Generally speaking, yep. by the way, this is considering you have good mechanics, good form, and good stability. Okay, somebody who has doesn't have the uh, doesn't have good or sufficient stability or mobility. Squatting ass to grass is not a good idea. You want to work your way to that with your stability and your mobility. But all things being equal, if we're talking to the average person who wants to develop overall strength, functionality, and well-developed legs, full full range of motion is typically better. Now, for some athletes, uh, it's actually better sometimes to do shorter range of motion, yeah. even higher than 90 degrees. In fact, you'll see basketball, basketball players oftentimes will do – they won't even go down to 90. They'll do uh, – they'll stop, you know, like a, you know, halfway down. Uh, to 90 and work on that range of motion because it contributes more to their... Uh, their That's the only time I, I see yeah. value in that is if it's very sport-specific. Everybody else should be working towards the deeper squat. Sure. If you can. Yeah. Even if you can't do it, uh, and I agree, I wouldn't recommend going lighter weight and then forcing yourself to do it. You should work on your hip and ankle mobility, which is normally the, the limiting factors uh, that won't allow somebody to get that deep in a squat. So I think that for the average population that mm-hmm. just wants to build muscle, lose body fat, be healthy... Those people, I think, should all be working towards the you know ass to grass type yeah. of squat, and if they can't, working on the mobility to be get there. Be strong and functional, and I mean, it, what promotes better positions like everyday positions where you're going to be down in and you're going to be sitting in in a squat more. It's going to be lower than ninety degrees, and so you know to be able to navigate in that position and have strength in that. Also, it's going to help to promote uh, more stability around you know the hips and the mm-hmm. joint, and so that way you know you're going to alleviate a lot of pain that's going to come up in the future and so you know there's a lot of things to consider with that but yeah the only other uh, instance i would say like 90 degrees is if it's a performance driven uh, pursuit it was life-changing for me to to work towards this i mean those that have been listening for a long time know this about my journey but when i was competing on stage and and you know looked the best i've ever looked uh, i had terrible squat mobility i mean i couldn't i couldn't break 90 uh, and then after competing, spent a really long time, probably a couple of years, of really focused on it. And the benefits of that for me have been crazy. Like I, I, my hip and back pain is like gone. Yeah, right? you used to get back pain all every the time. time you squatted all the time. Yeah. yeah, and then that's what kept me from doing it so much was it was just part of the process. It was like, oh, if I'm squatting, I'm be ready for my back to be on fire. So you know, work in, and instead of caring about the weight, and I could squat decent weight uh, back then. But now I, I see one, I see more development with less weight. So I can be squatting less yeah. weight and see my legs as developed and then eliminating all the pain. And that in itself, I think I think for most people, that should be yeah. a good goal or direction. Yeah, the other people that I would say wouldn't need to train with such a low squat would be a power lifter. Uh, you ba- power lifters are very specific. Again, it's performance-based, right? Yep. If you're, for a power lifter, you want to squat as low as, as required in order to get uh, clearance and then get strong there because uh, strong, getting stronger, going any lower might not really give you any particular value in your competition. But across the board, your goal should be to get to that point. Uh, and if you have the stability and mobility to do it, then train that way. It's Then that's true for every body part. Every single body part, every single exercise, the fuller range of motion performed safely with good stability mm-hmm. is going to be superior, generally speaking, than a shorter range of motion. Next question is from Meg, All Phases Fitness. What are some tips for building a team of trainers? Oh, man. I, I, like this. I love this question. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'll i tell you the mistake I made when I first started uh, it managing trainers and then how I evolved. Mm. The mistake I made early on was looking at the most edu- – trying the to get the most educated, educated ones. Yes. yes. So, like, yeah. someone would come to me and, oh, I have a master's in sports medicine or I have a bachelor's in, you know, whatever. And that would be the person that I would hire over – the new dude or girl who comes in uh, who just got a national cert, you know, to, in order to work there. Mm-hmm. And it was a mistake because, um, number one, they didn't necessarily have more applicable knowledge than the guy or girl who had the cert- certification. Here's why. Um, you learn a lot with, with that, that formal education. 
but we don't learn is how to apply it, which is everything. It really is everything. How to apply it is far more important than, than passing tests and books and, and that kind of stuff. Number two, your ability to communicate to clients and your passion for what you were doing and your willingness to get new clients, motivate people to go that extra mile was far more valuable in terms of client success, but also success to the gym than formal education. Um, it took me a year to figure this out. I could see which trainers were doing great and which ones weren't doing that great. And I'd see the skills that they had. And I'm like, oh, um, it's communication skills. It's applying their training. It's how good they work with people. Far more valuable than than you know all the schooling that they had. Yeah, I, I agree. This was um, it took me a long time to get to this place where I felt like I could build a team that uh, I didn't. I felt like I could get to a place like when I had Justin on the staff. By that time in my career, I got to a place where I felt like I really didn't have to work very much, and the staff really carried the team. But it took me a long time to figure that out. One of the mistakes was thinking that education was everything. I found out later on that I'd rather have somebody who had little to no education that I could mold into the trainer that I wanted them to be totally. versus inheriting somebody who was really, really smart and did things their way. The other thing that I used to make a mistake on was trying to make all of my trainers like me. You know, uh, th that was all I knew. Uh, I had success. So I, the things I taught was, okay, these are the things I'm successful at, I'm good at. Let me try and make this trainer like me or give them these attributes that I had. Um, that was also a mistake. It was, or at least it was fleeting. I'd find somebody who was like me and then we'd do well for a while, but then I'd burn out a bunch of other people that weren't. Later on, I began to look at my staff more like a football team. I have, you know, I've got linemen here. I've got a running back here. I've got a wide receiver here. And, and really celebrating their, their strengths and what they're great at and focusing on that. That is what served me really well was looking for that. So if I was to drop into a gym and I had to build a team right now and I had nothing, uh, I would look for a handful of trainers that are uh, young, little, minimal education that I could educate and teach and train. So I'd have a little core of that group. And then I'd actually go look for uh, specialties. I'd want to have the mobility guy the sports performance guy and guy or girl. Okay. I'd want, I'd want somebody who specializes in the, the nutrition person who's just dialed yeah. in or has. A, so I'd want all these kind of specialty type people to complement my core group of you know, chameleons that could, mm -hmm. that I'm going to develop that can train kind of anybody. Uh, that's how I would build a team now. And I think that would serve me better than going out and just looking for the smartest, most experienced trainer. Yeah, I like that. Uh, you know that approach. I think that um, really what you're looking for, characteristic wise, uh, is somebody who can really problem solve and think on the fly. Uh, and you know the communication skills are going to carry them much further than uh, their actual knowledge uh, coming into it. A lot of this is is, is learning and, and being able to be confident and uh, convey your confidence to to the clients and mm -hmm. and and really like they they're the ones that are are believing in what you're you're doing with them and so that's really like the importance of it is to to establish these relationships the one-on-one -on -one relationships client to to trainer and uh to to really be able to see how that uh flourishes for them to that point that i think this is also what changed for me too how i interviewed so early on it was just like it was trainer type questions you know what would you do in the case of this or give me a case study of yeah. this like that completely changed later on in my career to like all behavioral based questions totally yeah i wanted to get to the bottom of this person's character for the point that you're come you're bringing up right now justin is i want to learn about are you going to be able to problem solve when you're put in this type of situa situation how do you react mm -hmm. and i was looking for the right characters to to build in there forget the education piece forget all the experience of being a personal trainer yeah those things are nice if you don't have the right characteristics that I'm looking for for my team, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, I, I do think it's good to have you know some elder people on staff with some wisdom that you know. So it's at least one or two, you know, so that you're not carrying all the load of having to like you know convey all that to each person. Well, that goes back to my point yeah. of like having these like special. Like yes. if you got this badass nutritionist, badass sports person, badass mobility person, they can help educate that core five or six that you have, right? So if you got this young these young minds that oh, are, I used to have yeah. them run classes for the rest of the team. Yes. Because yeah. I would have the- You have the, your leaders within yeah. the Absolutely. Because here's, here's the truth. The truth truth be told, uh, when you train the average person, a very small percentage of your knowledge is ever going to be applied to this person. Really. You're, you're working with most people are either beginners or haven't worked out in a while. You're getting them to learn how to squat. You're getting them to learn how to row. You, you, all your, your advanced education 
you don't even use it. You don't need it. In very small cases, in very you know few cases, you will. But for the vast majority, it's basic knowledge. You just need to know how to apply it and communicate it properly and work well with uh, with people. Uh, but you, what you said, Adam, is a hundred percent true. You know, you definitely want because you're going to get the occasional client that comes in and says. I want a trainer. Uh, I got in a bad car accident a year ago. Um, I've got really bad movement on my right side. I finished rehab. What trainer do you have working with me for you know for me? Okay, in that case, I want my rehab trainer who's really really good and educated, like you know, in sports medicine. That's the person we'll send you out with her. You know, you have the person that's like, okay, I just had gastric bypass uh, surgery. Um, you know, I'm looking to hire a trainer. Okay, who's my my really really good? personable, excellent communicator, very empathetic trainer. That's the person that I want working with this person. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, your clients are, you know, average person, at least 30 pounds. I've been eating, you know, standard American diet, you know, whatever. I need to start working out two days a week or whatever. Then you'll have your general core. So I think what you said, Adam, was, uh, was absolutely yeah. mm-hmm. on point. Look, uh, you can find a lot of free information from Mind Pump just by going to mindpumpfree.com. We have tons of guides on everything from how to develop your body to how to burn body fat, even on how to become a better personal trainer. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Go check all that out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So we're all on social media. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. It's not because we think cardio is bad. It's not because we don't understand the benefits of it. It's because we know that 90% of the majority of people that we train, it's not ideal for them for the situation they're currently in. Yes. Mm-hmm. So cardiovascular activity does have some health benefits. But if you're the like most of the clients we worked with, and let's say you're a woman in your 40s and you want to 